everyone and welcome back so in this video let's see our overall architecture through this diagram so we are going to use aws cdk and our stack is mostly serverless so that's why we are saying it is a serverless stack and we are using mostly serverless technologies because all these nest js lambdas which we have written is going to be deployed as a simple lambda so we have written a rest api rest interface in this nest js services all those going to be deployed as a single lambda and we will see how it how it can happen i mean i was also surprised with that solutions and i'm going to follow that approach all these simple services auth order checkout can be a simple single lambda with a simple api gateway proxying all the requests to the lambda so you see in the architecture what all things uh, we are going to have we have this whole aws cloud environment which we are going to bootstrap through the aws cdk we have these backend services and we have these uh, front end applications front end applications which is like client side we have react uh, swelt kit and next js so all these applications are also going to be deployed to the aws let's say the front end uh, react app front end react app is just a simple uh, build output which you can just push through this cloud front and cloud front will read the content from the s3 bucket so you just deploy your build output to the s3 bucket with a static web hosting enabled and then cloudfront will read it and it will expose that through the cdn like cloudflare there is a cloudfront from the aws which provides caching and through to a different edge locations on the planet and for the services we can see there is api gateway and lambda so all these interface all these apis are rest apis which we are going to interact through these different clients like end user dash uh, restaurant admins or a delivery person all these is going to have access to these api gateways so what all services we have we have the proxy service auth service checkout service order service and delivery notification services and many other services which we are going to build you might get confused what all we have as a different different api gateways okay just don't get scared this api gateway is coming with just lambda because lambda cannot be exposed directly you need to have an api gateway in front of lambda only in that case it becomes your rest api which you can expose to the outside world so all these microservices will have an api gateway in front of them and then we already have this proxy lambda right so what this proxy lambda is doing proxy lambda in the code is routing your request based on the url pattern to a respective microservice let's say the user service auth service checkout service code service card service so the interesting point here is uh, you send a request to this first proxy service obviously proxy service is exposed through this gateway you will send a request to that gateway gateway will execute your proxy lambda and then proxy lambda will send a request to your respective microservice and that microservice is also exposed through another api gateways let's say the auth service will have its own api gateway so api gateway is nothing but just a url we are not going to use the features of api gateway which individual api gateway provides for we are using api gateway just to uh, get an endpoint you can say so every service will have its own uh, rest endpoints rest url for that environment and then this proxy lambda which is also exposed through the api gateway will hit through the code to i mean this will be a plain http call that you are going to make through this proxy lambda to the respective api gateway now you need to manually configure this api gateway url in the proxy okay the request is coming for api v1 user take it to the user api a gateway if api v1 order take it to the order api gateway if api v1 cart take it to the cart service cart microservice so lambda is doing the all these uh, redirection it's just like a plain http call and it's purely synchronous communication happening through this lambda so we have seen this stack in the local local environment okay there is a lambda there is a service which is calling other services that just a proxy we can we could have utilized the aws api gateway if we use this aws cognito or aws authorizer all these features for now this is just like a simple architecture and we are fine with that but you can also access these apis directly it's not constrained okay only there is a proxy lambda proxy api gateway because 
its API gateway and all these APIs are protected through the JWT token. So any user or any client can directly go and talk to the card service through the cards API gateway, user service through the user API gateway. Proxy Lambda is just like I wanted to expose only single endpoint. All the requests will pass through this API gateway and the Lambda will decide, Lambda code will decide what needs to be done. That's just like a pure synchronous communication happening. But in our code, we can also have asynchronous stuff going on because it's all in this Uber Eats clone. We can see many use cases where the events are happening all over the system. Order created, uh, delivery confirmed, order cancelled, uh, and a lot of delivery notification which, which comes over the time. Like user has checked out the order, user has placed an order and then doing the payment. So payment acknowledgement and delivery notification going to the user. All those are happening over the time and asynchronously. And we are using this serverless tech so we can use the this event driven capabilities through by introducing SNS, SQS, event brace, Kinesis stream, all those AWS components those can be bootstrapped through the AWS CDK. So let's say order created. User has put some items into the cart and said order created and check out and done the payment. So there will be a lot of internal events happening and these internal microservices can interact and can do a lot of things. So there can be a Lambda as another microservice will receive the events from these SNS, SQS and event bridge. So let's say you have emitted event user created. So you need to want to send an email. So there you will just send that message to the SNS because you want it asynchronous. You can send the email from that same microservice also, but we want to have a decoupled and event driven architecture where everything is happening through the events. There is an event, there is a responder of that event. There is an event is being generated through one service and there is another decoupled service which is not aware about the source of the event is handling that event and responding to that like let's say user created so there is sns topic you will send a message to the sns topic and there is a listener and there is another lambda microservice uh, or lambda simple lambda function lambda handler because these are handler those are handling the messages coming from sqs sns or lambda these are lambda triggers a plain and simple lambda, uh, javascript functions it will get the event and it will send a message to the target uh, email id or those kind of things can happen over the whole system order created. So you wanted to, there can be a, another microservice interested in order created events. They will listen to this and they will change the state of the system in the database order created. So user will see a different screen, different data, order has been cancelled or some kind of asynchronous notifications. All those things can happen through this, this platform using this SQS, SNS, event, bridge, Kinesis stream, you can uh, you can create these lambda triggers lambda lambda can be triggered by uh, through s3 bucket through api gateway through sns sqs event bridge let's say i send a message to the sqs there can be a lambda trigger listening to that message similarly you uploaded a new image to the s3 bucket you want to crop it and upload save it again so there can be a lambda trigger listening to the s3 put events Similarly, these Lambda triggers we can add in using AWS stack. So what all we have? We have API Gateway, Lambdas, DynamoDB, S3 buckets. So all these things we are going to bootstrap and we are going to play with all these things. And let's use this through the AWS CDK. But first of all, what we need to do is we need to just uh, understand these concepts by simple demo examples, like how to create S3 bucket, SNS, SQS, a simple Lambda with API gateway, a simple NestJS microservice, how we can be deployed as a simple 